think there we go awesome good morning everybody and welcome back uh to the live stream i know it's been a minute since we've done one of these i had a little break for the summer life got a little crazy but now we're back and we are ready to continue um and to actually start finishing up this portfolio um and while i wasn't streaming i was working on the portfolio because as i was building out the admin section uh, on the streams, it was getting pretty repetitive going back and forth between building the crud views um, and doing the testing and back and forth, back and forth. Um, and the real fun part is actually building like the front end interface. So I actually finished the, the admin uh, front end um, and uh, worked all that out. So what we're going to do up front is do a little tour of what uh, all the work I did. And then we can start working on the site front end. So that way, uh, hopefully it's not too boring for everybody. So we can go ahead and move this over. And we'll bring over our site front end because that's what we're working on. But before we do that, let's take a look at what we're actually building um, because it's been a minute. So this is the portfolio mockups that we came up with. Um, so we've got the landing page here. So we've got this nice little unique value proposition, um, projects, a little bit about my background here, um, some writing that we're highlighting, some media that I'm doing. And I think we're going to rename that to community. I think I left a note there. Um, yeah, because I like that, that terminology a little bit better. Um, then we've got this whole section down uh, after the community section. We've got this nice call to action. Um, and then a little bit more of an about me. And then just a footer down here with the contact and everything like that. So that's what we're going to be working with. Um, we've got this about page, which will just be a little bit more of an in-depth look at who I am. We've got a projects page, which will have all of the projects. We have an individual project, which we originally were playing on hard coding, but as I was building out the um, the backend uh, CMS, I decided to make this a little bit more data driven. So it actually is going to be in the database. So that's that was a change that I made. Uh, we've got our blog posts here as well. Um, so this is going to be a longer page, and then sorted by their tags, which I this isn't super clear, so I'm, I might tweak this a little bit, but that's kind of where I'm going at uh, for now. And then we've got our blog posts, so whatever whatever this will look like, but we'll have a little author bio. And then I might redesign this. I, I This is consistent with like the rest of the design, but I kind of like the idea of having this a little bit more horizontal, so I might move that around a little bit. And then the footer, like we've seen. Um, going to the back end, we've made some changes to the back end. So we no longer have our dashboard. We kind of work through that together. Um, because we moved to more like an email setup than like a CRM setup. So that's going to be fine. Blog posts, though, look, uh, I think, fairly consistent. This images, this grid actually came out really nice. I'm excited to show that to everybody. Uh, and yeah, that's kind of everything that we uh, changed. And we've added some things here. So let's walk through this admin here. Um, so here we are. So this is everything coded out. And we've got a little bit of an overflow going on here, but we did that with uh, some CSS. Made that look pretty nice. So we've got our posts. Tags images, which hopefully, oops, I went to the wrong screen. Looks a lot like our uh, our mock-up here. A little, a few semantic changes, but I think that's okay. Um, we can come here. If we view one, we actually go to like the the live post itself. And if we wanted to edit one, we just pop in here and edit, <clears throat> see all the details. And we've got our images down here. So this actually is a view component, which is really nice because I can pretty much pick it up and drop it wherever I need it. Um, so if we go back, I have to cancel and we go to images, uh, we can see all the images that we have in the system, but they also exist on those pages. So if I just wanted to grab a link, uh, we've got some alert messaging going on, I can go ahead and grab that no problem or upload an image right there in the page. So that's that's pretty nice. I <clears throat> wasn't originally planning on doing that, um, but as I was building it, I got a little carried away. Uh, so I built it in Blade first, and then I built it in as a view component and changed the, the API calls. Um, so that's that's kind of what's going on there with the posts. Creating a post is pretty much the same form, and we've got our images down here. Um, so and and basically, we decided to say that this content supports Markdown uh, and not do a fancy sort of Markdown editor or anything like that. Um, let's see what else can we do. We've got our tags. Tags are going to look pretty similar. Um, so you can come in here and you can edit your tags. Nothing nothing super crazy. If we if we wanted to delete a tag, we could come in here hit delete. I'm not doing like any sort of sweet alert or anything like a fancy modal. We're just doing sort of the built-in confirm um, JavaScript there. So that's what's going on with our uh, posts. And then we have this media section, which uh, corresponds to, if we go back to our mockup, to everything that's happening here. 
um, just so that way we can swap that in and out. So that's what's what was happening here. We have the title, header image, uh, a link to go see it, and then a description. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that is what is um, going on here. And again, we have our image gallery down below. Nice delete if we want to delete them. I like having like my destructive actions like kind of be hidden, uh, or not hidden, but like I, I personally I don't like having them here because it, it feels like it's very easy to accidentally click one. And even with the confirmation, I don't want to do that. So having that be in the page and it, making it a real conscious decision to go and delete something for me, I think is a nice interaction um, pattern. Um, and I'm, I'm the only user in this project, so I can design it how I like it. And again, we have the image gallery here if I wanted to kind of quickly bounce back and forth. Then projects, and this was, this is new. We didn't, we weren't originally planning to have, where do we go here? Uh, projects in the back end, but we could, we're going to hard code them a little bit. But as I kind of got going, I was like, ah, you know what? This could this could work as Markdown, um, so it's not going to be anything too too fancy. So um, so in here we have all the details for our uh, project, which I think came out pretty nicely. Um, and then finally we've got a little profile section. So this is if I wanted to edit my stuff, I could come in here and do that pretty easily. So that's kind of it. Um, on the back end, so that's kind of what we worked on. Uh, the cool thing about all this is I wrote tests for everything. So PU is my alias for PHP unit. Um, and who was going to take a minute here? There we go. Uh, everything is green. So really nice. We got a whole bunch of tests to make sure that everything on this back end is working, um, as well as everything on the front end, which is, is really nice. Um, and that was kind of a fun uh, process going through all this. And that's a lot of tests and a lot of assertions. Um, as we can see by this ratio, I'm the kind of developer who likes to have a lot of assertions in their tests, whatever whatever floats your boat. Uh, but that is what uh, is going on there. So let's go and take a look at some of this. And because I, I think it's really interesting, we'll just do a little tour. Um, so inside of this uh, section here, we kind of have everything broken up by model. So we've got this sort of internal layout, which is sort of the wrapper for everything that's happening. Uh, this is our nav bar and then our content. And then we've got this little alerts um, section in here which I thought was, it's really kind of simple. Uh, it's just like if there's an alert on the session, and I, I kind of, I thought I was going to have more alerts, so that's why I extracted it to its own blade file partial a little bit early. Um, but um, and, and but now I'm kind of set up here. So again, using Tailwind, um, and if we have these successful session messages, uh, we pop them up, and I've got a little bit of JavaScript that looks checks to see if they're on the page and then just takes them out of the page when they're done. Um, so that's what's going on there. So that's kind of our, our layout. Uh, if we look at the post page, because I think that's kind of what the most interesting page is. So where do we go? Yeah, we're on this post page. Um, if we just look at the index, where we, we have here, pretty simple stuff. It's not like super rocket science. Um, I actually ended up, I, the cool thing about this page, at least in my opinion, is that I ended up using um, CSS grid instead of a table. Um, and a couple of reasons for that. One was I was having a terribly difficult time getting this overflow to work the way I wanted it to. Uh, and CSS Grid was just way easier to work with. Um, and also like the exact spacing of the columns uh, themselves and, and getting them to fit the content while also not being um, like weirdly spaced was, was becoming an issue for me. So um, that's why I went with Grid instead of a table. Uh, and I think it turned out pretty nice. It, it really um, is exactly what I was looking for with it. So um, I'm, I'm really happy and I might use Grid in the future now. So that was a fun little technology, uh, a new technology that I, I use in the past, but not for maybe this purpose. So I was pretty happy with that. Um, let's see here on the show page. Actually, we I, I, I scaffold all these show pages out, but we don't like really have it. So I left them in there. Um, but technically the show page is happening on the front end. So there's a separate section for that. Um, I kind of have the admin section and the back end section kind of uh, separated from each other, um, just for my, my own sanity. This is the create page, nothing super, I think crazy happening here. It's just a form. We've got a little bit of Laravel uh, route helpers, which I wasn't using at first and then did like a big refactor to using and it was a lifesaver because the really nice thing is that I can do like web in, in my routes section here. Uh, what are we looking at? We're looking at posts. And so this route resources actually generates names, which we can, like you can explicitly define here, but it generates a name for every route, which I think is super, super helpful. Um, so I can just kind of call it like this and know what I'm talking about as opposed to like having to remember what like my nested like 
it's an admin dash whatever it's like just here and nicely named for me and if i ever change it over here on the website it gets automatically updated and so i can use it here and in my tests and my routes to say really consistent so that was really nice a good refactor um that i i found um what else is going on here? Nothing nothing super, super crazy. We've got sort of error messaging, which this changed. Uh, I think we upgraded to like a new version of uh, 5.8. And so this, I don't think we had this at error. Um, so that was just a little refactor for the, the latest version of Laravel. And then we've got this um, image uploader here, which I think is uh, a, a nice little view component. So we can go take a look at that real fast. Um, so where are we here? Resources, we've got our JavaScript components. So we've got our image uploader and then our image gallery. So those are two separate components. Um, so the uploader, which corresponds, if we go over to images, it's just like this little top card here. Um, so we've got this top card and then um, it's really just a form and kind of shows all the errors, but it handles like all of our um, logic in here for posting to um, my back end and then that's posting to the Cloudinary interface. So that was just a little bit of um, I don't know, keeping keeping things sort of contained based on their functionality. Um, the annoying thing is we don't we don't get those route helpers anymore. I could probably pass that in as a prop or something, or I think there's actually a package that does this um, that exposes your Laravel route names to your views components. Um, but because it was just one component, I wasn't looking to make that sort of an optimization. Um, so that's what's going on here with the image uploader. Image gallery is, yeah, I think even more straightforward. Um, we've got a little bit of an event bus going on. I didn't want to pull in Vuex. I thought that was a little overkill for this small of a project in the JavaScript side. Um, so I just used a little event bus to, whenever there's a new image getting uploaded, that way we can grab it and send it over to the gallery. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, and then this is just the image card itself. And the image card, just doing some computed properties, kind of, normalizing the, the data the way we want it. Um, and then um, it handles the deleting and also like the copying, which we're just writing some vanilla JavaScript here essentially. Uh, and that's what it's what it's doing for us. So that is pretty much everything that's going on here. Um, yeah, in these, in these few components. <clears throat> I did that fairly quickly. I probably could clean up a lot of things in there, but uh, that's all that's going on. And the edit page is it's pretty much identical. The only thing that I thought is really cool uh, over here was, and I, I learned this in doing this, um, I haven't worked with Laravel old a lot. Um, so the old, the way this like helper works is if you submit your form, it um, grabs the old value that you were trying to submit. So that way your forms don't like um, get cleared or reset when you're submitting them. But you can also pass in a default value. So for this edit form, it's really nice because I can have what it is like currently um, off the bat, so it's probably easier to look at this. So if I hit edit, uh, it would say whatever this is. But let's say I did something like I, I think I need to have a header image. So if we kind of look at our our validation here, so the head, header image field is required. But like if I change this, so that's no longer the value that is set on the model. It's the actual uh, like old value that I'm trying to input here. Like that stays consistent, so I don't lose what I was trying to do, um, but I still can have my uh, other data in here as well. So I think I thought that was like a nice little helper. That might not have been the best explanation, but um, that is what is going on. So that's the back end for the most part. Um, if we have specific questions, happy to happy to answer those. But um, yeah, for the most part, that is what is going on. So that was kind of a catch up walkthrough on everything that I was doing. Uh, and just for context, that took me, oh, how long? I would say about like three-ish days of like real kind of heads down kind of work. Um, I, could, I kind of had like a free weekend and, and was visiting some family and was able to kind of do this uh, in the evening. And so just for context, if anyone's wondering like, oh, wow, that looks like a lot of work. How long did that take you? Um, that is about how long it took. So um, on the other side, we have our front end, right? We have the rest of the site. And I'm actually going to get exit out of our admin because we don't need to look at it. So, and this is what I haven't done yet. So I thought this would be more interesting for everybody to see along the way. The only thing that I have done is I've gone to like these pages and I've scaffolded out the routing and like the data uh, for those different pages. So you can go to like an individual project page, you can go to the blog, you can click on a blog post um, and you, 
you can go and, and click on a tag or something like that. So, uh, and obviously not a lot of styling going on here. So I've, I've scaffolded the routing because that's kind of a little boring in my opinion. Um, and I didn't want to uh, put anyone to sleep here. So that's what's going on. Um, so now it's time to start coding. So what I'm going to look at and I've got to go to our mockups. I would like to try and do the landing page today. Well, fingers crossed, we'll see if we can do it. Um, it's a long page and it's got some SVG stuff in here and SVGs are great, but for some reason they, there's always a hiccup or two. So uh, we're gonna just kind of um, roll from there and see how much we can get done. Um, and actually I was, because I know SVGs are hard, I was playing with this one a little bit. So I actually have the code already. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of roll uh, from there. So let's see, uh, where do I wanna go? So PHP Storm, exit out of all these guys. And because we're gonna do some Uh, tail and stuff probably I'm gonna set set up watch because um, I want I want to so we have purge CSS set up and I normally run uh, and also so we can get our hot reloading going uh, I normally run uh, that every time I'm pushing to git so um, that it's really just a force of habit that's that's there's no real reason uh, for it I was working on a project once that didn't have um, CICD set up properly so in order for my changes to be like be in production i had to manually uh run that command so that i got in the habit of doing it and in this project i'll probably set that up so i don't have to worry about it but that's why um i i tend to do that so uh so anyway that was a little tangent but we're, we're back to our local host and we're ready to start coding uh as well so let's go here where we go um, so I was kind of explaining that I, I have everything sort of uh, differentiated between the back end and the front end. So all of my pages that are sort of on this like, fr I'm saying front end, not like uh, like HTML, CSS, like the client, oh, like the, the user side of the visitor side of the application versus my admin side. And I, that's probably gonna get a little confusing, but I'll try to make the distinction between the visitor and like the admin section. I think that makes the most sense. Um, so anyway, uh, we've got our SVG in here. Uh, which I was kind of playing with. So let's go ahead and give this a, there we go. So we've got this SVG, which is uh, essentially what this shape is here. Um, and SVGs, I personally think are like my, my best way to work with this. Um, I don't know really a better way to do so, but obviously we're gonna have to do some work here on like the responsiveness and like where, what size it is at all these different breakpoints and how how it's going to fit on like super wide screens. I haven't really thought that one through. So uh, that's definitely going to be something we're going to work on together here. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's, it's coming along pretty good. So I just want to make some tweaks. Um, and when I was playing with this, which was a little while ago, I have to note for myself to use height instead of width. So I think we're going to be making uh, a couple of those adjustments here. So I'm going to hop over to my dev tools because I think that's kind of the easiest way to play with this sometimes. Uh, and I make sure it's on the right screen. There we go. Alrighty, try to make this a little smaller. Let's hop in here. Okay, and we'll play with our classes. That's why I love working with Tailwind because you've got all your classes here. Um, and you can just, you can play with stuff like that. So let's see here. So max width, large, height auto. Alrighty, so no styling constraint to take up the full, full screen here, which is pretty big. Um, let's see, height. So these are our big, our larger sort of heights here. We just kind of play with some stuff because we don't have a component yet. Now I'm gonna use VH, which I know not always the best. Um, yeah, so that's not really what we want. Let's try if we go 100%. No, that's not either. And if we, let me just try, oh, I didn't want to open zoom. Uh, that's the, the only problem with the, the bar sometimes. You can get into tricky details like that. Hmm. Maybe I don't know. I thought I left myself that note, so I know I was trying to tell myself something. That's the problem with leaving yourself notes if you're not clear on what the note means. I obviously figured something out. Hmm.
get rid of these again. If I say like height, it's got to go 50 rem. Okay, so that's how we keep it from I guess being too flexible. That actually makes more sense because we're thinking about like this content here. We don't want the it flexing as much as it was. Um, let me go to Tailwind Docs here. Because I want to see the values that they're offering here. Yeah, 64 is 16. Um, and we're going up to 40. So this is like the one time where I think it gets a little hard to use um, Tailwind is like when you're coming up with like a new utility for like one very specific situation. Um, that sometimes I ask myself, is this a good opportunity to really use a, um, uh, like a, I don't know, I'm losing the, the term for it, less of a, like adding utility and more of like a custom class. So that's probably what we're gonna end up doing here and we'll just apply the other ones uh, as well. So this height, we're going for like 40. Um, where we go? There we go. Let's go to our code here and just kind of start working on that. I'm going to close Zoom so I have a little more RAM here. Um, and we're going to call this uh, Hero SVG. That's what it is. And I think, all right, we'll open up our app SAS here. I've got a few com different components in here or utilities already. Uh, for my backend work. And so there's, I think, an argument to be said for making this its own partial. Um, and I'm actually not opposed to that. So that way we can just kind of keep things a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, file, and we'll just call this admin utilities. Spell that right? That's SAS. Oh, we'll do the underscore here. these. Oh, sometimes it does this. I don't know why. It's like I need to paste without formatting. Is that going to do it? There we go. Um, so we have all these guys and then I can go ahead and say include Oh, uh, no, I'm getting my my Laravel and my uh, SAS mixed up here. So let me just go and Google that. The partial SAS basics. It has been a minute. I've gotten so used to Tailwind that I've forgotten my, my SAS. Um, let's see here. Partials import. That's what I'm looking for. Um, not include. utilities awesome and I might have to do a little now nah, it looks like it should have rebuilt let's see if it works if I go back to my admin looks like it's still working all right we'll call that a we'll call that a win um, so let's see here so I'm also going to import my um, we're going to call it visitor for now I spelled that right. Cool. So that's what's going on there. And what do we have here? We've got our hero SVG. So that's going to be our first little helper class that we're working with here. Um, and I want to keep some of this tailwind styling. So we're going to use our add apply. And we're going to say absolute. And then let me just so I can see both of these pages here. Um, and then we've got our top zero and then our right zero. And then this is the nice part. Like I can blend my tailwind and my, um, what, like my manual uh, styles that I was trying to do. I think we said, did we say 60 or 50? Let's take a look here. Oh, don't, don't auto build on me. Yeah, it did. That's okay. We'll play with that in a second. Uh, and we can get rid of all this other stuff. So we're, we're not losing our tailwind by um, 
abstracting this out to our own sort of utility, we're keeping it and we're, we're actually getting a lot more control now. We have our, our actual CSS. The 60 looks like it's too big. Um, maybe it was 40, I don't remember. I got distracted doing all the other stuff we were doing. Yeah, 40 looks like what it was. Obviously, we're going to need to do some, um, whatchamacallit, mobile optimizations here. But So, so let's, let's actually start with that. So we're at 40 here. And I'm actually wondering if I even want this to be on mobile. Um, I don't know. Because it's going to sit in the background. But it's kind of like a weird shape for mobile, and I don't know if I'll be able to fit all the other content on top of here. So we might actually hide this on mobile. Um, so let's, we could say display none, height 40, and then, oh, that's the wrong, I forgot how I did this. I've got my breakpoints all over in here, so um, there we go. And we could say display inline could work. Alrighty, so we got rid of that. There we go. I think that's nice, personally, because um, that keeps it a lot cleaner on mobile. Like I know we're like losing that functionality, but that's like progressive. That idea of progressive enhancement. So uh, I like where this is personally. So we've got that in there. And now we've got this sort of navigation going on, um, which is going to be interesting, an interesting one to style. But I think that's a good one to go next. We, we have this landing page, the little, little guy here, uh, which is a little distracting right now. So I'm just going to take that off. Because um, we'll come back to this. We've got this whole section to figure out. So now we have this nav here. Um, I also don't think we're applying like the right font. Here, so we've got this font primary. Let me just double check that. So in our tailwind config, okay, we do have that. Okay, that's nice. So we are using quicksand already. I wasn't. I, I saw that we imported it, but I wasn't sure if we were using it. So that's good to see. Um, alrighty. So now we're gonna want to do. Oh, but we don't have our color palette, which is another thing to think about. Uh, let's see here. Where did my tailwind go? So that's probably the next thing we're gonna want to add. Because if we look at our mockup, we've got like all sorts of um, this kind of blue color that we're working with. And then we've got this like slightly darker version of it. I think those are the only two. And we got this really dark, so we kind of have three. Um, yeah, three versions of that. We've got light blue, dark blue. I think those are the three colors. Um, so let's set that up. So we'll go over here and. Adding base styles, I think that's what we want. Hmm. All right, customization, that's probably what, let's go to colors. Okay, that's nice. That went over right then. Oh, no way. I didn't know you could do this. Wow. That changes a lot of my custom CSS. Uh, so that's really cool. It looks like you can actually like reference your configuration values inside of your, your CSS files. Um, man, I wish I had known. I wish I had known that. Um, oh, that's kind of cool. This is probably what I want to do, and in terms of my, like, I, I'm probably going to override the default blue. Um, so let's grab this guy here. So let's see here. So we, we're, we already got theme in here. So we've got extend. And we've got our colors which we are going to import from the default theme. 
They make it so easy. They do a really nice job in their documentation. So thank you, Tailwind team. Okay, so we've got colors blue here. Um, so let's go look at blue. I'll actually open this in a new tab here. Oh, I guess it was on the right page. So it looks like we'll do like the 400, the 500, the 600. I guess I could do seven. That's like, do we want to really, how much do we want to customize this? But, um, or I could just kind of rename it something else. Do I want to preserve it? Hmm. These are the choices. This, see, see, this is why I like using Tailwind, because I don't have to like make these decisions. <laughs> I can just uh, roll with it. And so um, that's a huge advantage. I think I'm going to go for more of this approach now, now that we added all that code over already. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and say colors. And we'll get rid of this. Alrighty, and so we'll say primary, um, I'm gonna say primary dark, nope, we can go like this, primary light, we don't really have a secondary color, we kind of got rid of it, and let me go to my sketch file here, so let's grab our primary color here. I could probably grab that from somewhere else. Maybe this button. There we go. And then we can grab our light color. I believe it's just this. Oh, that's a, uh, we'll grab it from here. And yeah, there's probably a way for me to auto generate my styling here, but I think this is going to work. Okay, let me just go through this real fast to see if I can notice any other color differences. It looks like it's just those three, though. Um, the only thing I'm curious about is if this is exactly the same. So that's at five. Yeah. I think that matches everything. Cool. So now we've got our colors in here. Um, so let me go to our nav and see if I can change this. So our navigation sort of logo is going to be that primary. So we could say uh, text primary, uh, yeah, just be text primary. And let's see, go to the right page. And I might have to, because we added, yeah, new stuff, re rerun that. Um, let's take a peek, let's see if that happens. All right, still getting an error, it sounds like. What's going on? Hmm, so this admin card here. This was not failing a minute ago. I'm wondering if our... Partials are mixing that up. Let me just try this real fast. All right. It looks like I probably had to reset this. So let me try this real fast. Uh, which is frustrating, but sometimes how do you have to play the game if you don't want to... Oh did this thing again. So paste without formatting. Okay, that's kind of useless, but eh, it's not useless. Alrighty, paste without formatting. And we'll give that another run and see if that fixes it. going on here? Maybe 
I know, right? Let me go check our documentation here to make sure I understand what's going on here. I want to override the default color and extend the palette. Oh, it disables it. <laughs> That's what's going on. I do need that extend. That's what's going on. So you can't just add this. You have to actually. That's and so that's why that was failing because it did, no longer had access to those underlying colors. All right. Let's give this a run. See if it works. And we can go back to where we were. Okay. Yep. I didn't see any errors there, so I think we're back. Um, nice. And there we go. Okay. Now that's coming through. Awesome. That like our colors are working now. And I think we can go back to our imports, which is really what I wanted, because I don't want this being um, super cluttered with everything in here. Sometimes when you're doing this like setup stuff, deleting files and moving things around, you got to go back and forth a few times, but I think we're finally in a spot where this is going to work for us. Nice. Okay, cool. So now we've got our colors in here, which is super, super uh, helpful. So um, I don't think I have a text scale in here. I'm just going to kind of use the default um, tailwind one, and we're kind of going to run with that. Let me go ahead and inspect here. Uh, where's our nav? So this guy is in here. And I don't think I'm supposed to do this semantically. I forget what the best. I think you're supposed to do the A and then the H1, because I want that to be the number one element on the page. Uh, do I? Probably not. I want the actual content to be the number one thing on the page. So let's go ahead and make some tweaks here. probably gonna need to say no underline um, maybe actually I think that's in our default all right cool now we're working uh, and we're gonna say text maybe like 2xl 3xl I like that that's pretty good to me And we'll do some hover stuff. Um, that's more or less, yeah. Let's see here. I think we're going to want to do some sort of container on the entire body. Because we have this guy here. Let me see if this works. Actually, we, do not, we don't want that. Um, the reason being we're going to have those um, SVGs later down on the page, and those are going to want to go across the full width. That's one way to handle it. We're probably going to also want to absolutely position them. So talk, rubber ducking, talking out your idea here, helps you come up with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so maybe we can do this. Oops, let me just see if this will work. And yeah, so that's what I was afraid of. Um, running into something like that. So that's not going to work for us. Um, so we can go ahead and tweak this ourselves. I would say max with like 6L. That puts it there. Let's go look at our max width values. 72 rounds. What would be the next step in this? Um, let's see here. That would be eight. Be eight in between them. So that would be eighty. Is that eighty-eight? So let's say. 
I always find myself adjusting the max width. Um, let's see if this is going to work for us. That would be 88 uh, rim, and we actually want 7 as well. And get rid of these guys. Let's see if that works. All right. Let's see if we got 8. Alrighty, and I've got a bigger screen. I've got two monitors here, so I'm just going to pop this up to see if it worked. Maybe it worked. Doesn't look like it's working. What's up with that? Yeah, it's not working. We have to watch it. That's kind of the, the frustrating thing sometimes, but part of the job. Alrighty. Let's see if that worked. Hmm. So why is that? Not even showing up in our classes, so I must have done something uh -huh wrong here. So let's see. Um, let's see if I've been spacing here. Oh no, do I need to extend that? Alright. Hmm. We're gonna max with here and see if it says anything about customizing. Yeah, theme, that's what we did. Oh, I probably have to put in quotes. It's little details I get you. Hello, welcome. Sorry, didn't see your um, your chat come through. It's hard with the two monitors. Sometimes they get them all over the place. But welcome. Happy you're here. And is it working for us? No. Why is that? The max width. off and we're gonna look at this together see if I'm doing something wrong here so we're in our module exports and then we're inside of theme and we've got max width and we're adding seven we're trying to add seven and eight and we're gonna try and set that to the rem just not cooperating for some reason I, mean, I can try putting it in extend. I don't think that makes sense. Oh, nice. Awesome. I'm glad you uh, <laughs> glad you liked it. Um, yeah, that was a fun, fun little tutorial. So I'm glad, glad you liked it. Um, definitely have a lot of fun writing those those blog posts. I have to. I'm going to get back on it. I need to. I haven't written one in a long time because I'm doing these live streams. But blogging is something that I love, so I want to. I want to start doing that again. Um, this is this is the behind the scenes. What you don't see when I write a blog post is me struggling for like 30 minutes trying to figure out how to get this config going. Um, but I think it's worth worth seeing. Um, nice. 
Laravel is uh, awesome, so glad you're glad you're learning it. Um, I've had a lot of fun with Laravel over the years, uh, both in my side projects and my professional stuff. So that's really awesome. Let's see here. Hmm. I don't know why that's not cooperating. Hmm. What is Axis? I don't really understand it. I don't know what that is. Axios. Oh, that is Vue.js, uh, or not JS. It's a JavaScript package for um, doing your API calls. So it's not Laravel specifically. It's uh, it's essentially like, oh, jQuery has a version of it. Um, there used Vue used to have one as well. It was uh, Vue Resource, I think. Um, it's basically just a wrapper for making AP, yeah, Ajax API calls essentially. Um, makes that a lot easier to to work with so I don't know why that's not working here so we're gonna do this the old-fashioned way here and we're gonna say I know this will work uh, and we're gonna say 88 rem oh, not what I wanted and let's see what it so I'm trying to think is there a good Axios. I mean, reading the, the Axios documentation is probably the best way to learn more about Axios. Uh, so Axios. Oop. Not, there we go. It's just a little shut up. Um, so yeah, just kind of read through this. That's, I think, what I did the first time I had to learn it. And basically, it's it's a, a wrapper around making Ajax calls to your backend server. So you've got your, your route here that you want to get data from. You're doing a get request. Then you've got your promise set up here. Um, and that way, um, yeah, you can get your data and then add it um, to your JavaScript. So it's, it, that's more JavaScript related than, than Laravel related. They're two separate um, sort of, oh, saving the wrong window here. Uh, two separate sort of things. All right, so this should work now. There we go. Now we're seeing our max width here. And again, I'm just going to pop this up into my larger window. So it's like, yeah, that's about the size I want it to be. So I can see it here. Um, cool, cool, cool. All right, that took way longer. Some like that's uh, I know um, Tailwind's in active development, so sometimes you can run into that stuff. I should probably get on the latest version. I think I'm like one or two minor versions behind, um, and maybe that's been resolved. But that was that was a weird one because I was kind of following that. So I might make a um, gonna make a note to myself to look up on that um, because I want to either submit a request or merge that into core or something like that. Do a, do a little open source. I think they take the PRs. Um, I'm learning Laravel Spady all right now. A uh, bit weird to fully understand it. Spady, so, uh, oh, ACL, yeah. So uh, Spady's got like a thousand different packages. So you kind of have to specify which one. Uh, and they're awesome. Love the Spady team. So thank them for everything they do. Um, but... What was I going to say here? Yeah, ACL is hard. Um, it's hard generally. I think it, the first time you're doing it, it's just hard to kind of wrap your mind around it. Um, that package does make it super easy, but it also adds like additional complexity that some smaller apps might not necessarily need. So that's something to kind of keep in mind is that you're, you're trying to balance like, does this fit for what I'm trying to do or, or not? Um, okay, so now we can go ahead and start making these links look a lot better. Um, can we do items baseline? I mean, sometimes it's hard to see with that in the way. All right, that looks nice. And I think I know what I want these to look like, so I'm just going to go ahead and start doing this in here. Let's see if we can't add some styles. So class, text, and we'll do like 2XL, and then font, text white. Um, oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's definitely, it's, it's been a long work in progress. I think I started doing these streams in January. Um, and so, it's, but I'm, I'm only working on it when I'm streaming, except for this last sort of batch where I did a lot um, outside of, uh, the, I, I basically built the admin because we were on a little break there. I'm gonna say XL. Um, but yeah, I think it's coming out pretty pretty nicely. I'm a little, probably a little biased, but that's, <laughs> uh, I hope it's coming out nicely. So thank you, appreciate that. Alrighty, we'll give that a little bit more spacing. 
And we're going to do even more spacing. I want this. I want this to have some white space. Yeah. And maybe bump this up. What do I do most of my work in? Mostly Laravel and, and Vue.js. Um, and that's about it. Yeah, building building portfolio is fun. Definitely enjoyed this process. Um, yeah, mostly Laravel and JavaScript, um, Tailwind, CSS. I don't I don't know Python. I don't use it. Uh, something it's on my list of things to learn though. Definitely want to um, get more into Python because I think it's super super valuable for a lot of stuff. Um, and I don't think this baseline. Sometimes I'll do this if I really want to see. No, I guess it is. Sometimes like optically it doesn't look balanced, but. Um, I guess it is when you're over such a long distance. Oh, those are, <laughs> I'm going to have to do some responsive stuff. So let's see here. Uh, let's say MD text white. And this will be text uh, gray. Let's do like 700. looking better and let me just throw this in mobile mode I use an iPhone 5 still holding out see and then it does that kind of stuff so um, you have to be good at raw CSS to understand Tailwind yes I would say yes um, th these are all basically mapping to individual properties so I think you do need to have an understanding of how they work together in order to um, really understand how Tailwind is working that said, it's wait. I think uh, I think it's a um, it's it's a really great way to learn CSS and get better at it because um, you I don't know it's kind of hard to say it's like everything's right there at your fingertips and so I find it's like super nice that way but um, definitely worth um, a really nice sort of conduit towards getting better at CSS. You kind of start with what you know, and then you can add stuff as you want to change things. But I would say you, you probably want to be decent at, um, well, not decent, but just an understanding of CSS will really help your uh, ability to write Tailwind. Put that there. Make things a little smaller and mobile. I'm kind of doing this a little ad hoc, um, but I think it's kind of working. For right now, nice, nice. That's gonna work. Make things a little bit bigger on the larger screen. Um, share your portfolio. Throw it in the chat. Other people, I think, would love to see it. That's um, always fun. And I do portfolio reviews on Wednesdays. I haven't done one in a while, but I'd like to get back on it. Um, nice. So if you want uh, me to give you some feedback on it, I notice that's blue on blue there, so it's kind of hard to see. So can I scroll down for you? It's there. It's in the chat. Uh, I can I can move this over, right? There you go. Um, let's see if this is gonna open in the right window here. So definitely nice. I don't know if I want notifications, but <laughs> they'll block them. Nice. Wow. I love your animations. It's always super fun. Nice. Definitely. I'm gonna take a closer look at this because it looks like a really nice one. Blue on blue, yeah, <laughs> definitely good too. I like blue. I'm gonna, I'm using blue just a different shade. Um, super, super fun. I'll take it. I'm gonna take a closer look at that later though, because that looks like an awesome portfolio. WordPress and Divi, nice. I don't know Divi. Is that uh, a, a what you call a, um, a library or is that a is that something I'm totally just out of the loop with? I don't know WordPress that well. All right, what was I gonna do? I was gonna do the hover states now. Um, and app, so I do wanna go into here because I think I grabbed, yeah, this is actually a universal a theme with a front end page. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nice, that's pretty cool. I put this guy here. So your global utilities, you wanna make sure you're kind of keeping out uh, over here. And I'm actually, oh, that just happened. Oh, nice. I need to, that's, there's like, a thousand other things you can always be learning with development. So I, I need to spend more time in, in WordPress, in, in the land of WordPress, because I just don't know enough about it. Um, I did a, a, a lot of work with Drupal way back in the day. Um, 
so I need to. <laughs> and I always was like, man, I think WordPress is so much nicer, but um, I don't know. The pros and cons of both of those. But oh, I've got, oh, I'm overrating classes here. That's funny. Um, yeah, so that, but that site looked pretty cool. I'll have to take a closer look. So anyway, we've moved that around, so we'll say transition small. Um, let's see here, and we'll do hover text primary dark. I don't know why that didn't, that's not what I want to, I want to use the, I probably have to do something like this. That's weird, I thought it would auto uh, case that for me, but I don't think it did. Yeah, definitely easier to use something off the shelf than building your own um, backend, as someone who just built their own backend will attest to. It is not always the easiest. All right, that looks really nice. So we'll go back. And then these ones are going to be tricky because I've got like, I actually don't know if you can do this. Let's see. Uh, what am I looking for here? Responsive design. I want to do like responsive um, pseudo classes, which is going to be tricky. I think you can do, I think you can chain them. Yeah, there we go. Hover VG. Yeah, you can chain them like this, which is really nice. That's good. Oh, that'd be cool. I would love to see some uh, Nova packages like that. That would be really nice. Um, that would be pretty, pretty good. All right, so that one we can leave alone. Um, this hover, okay, so what are we doing? So we've got our, our colors down here. We've got hover, text, we'll just say gray, and we'll probably say like 900. And then on medium, we'll do hover, I'm actually gonna put this over here. And I don't know why I didn't do this in like every spot. There we go. That's why. All right. So we'll say medium, hover, text, gray, 200. No, it's expensive. Yeah, it is like a hundred bucks, um, which I know that's that's probably expensive for a lot of folks. It is like an incredible time saver, um, so I will um, kind of argue for it. But I, I understand a lot of folks. It's just out of the out of the uh, realm of possibility. So that one's getting it for at least two not. Oh, because I don't have the transition. No, hang on. Oh, I didn't add this yet. Mega CMS library away from Nova, such as Pyro and October. Yeah, those are actually both great solutions. I really like October. Um, I've used that in the past. Um, so that I think is something. But like, there's something to be said for like finding your niche and like going for it. So like, I don't know if there is a, uh, a CMS for with Nova just yet. And so if that's like a niche that works for you, like obviously there are people out there who would use it. So. Um, Sometimes it's like go where the other people are not, where there's less competition, but still like a need. That that could be a good way to think about things sometimes. Uh, cool. This looks like it's working pretty nice. All right, we've got navigation more or less figured out. Um, and I will I, I do this thing where I like do like ninety percent of the styling and then come back at the end and really um, really try and figure things out, but that's going to work for us for right now. Okay, now we've got to do this kind of fun part here with the header where we're going to stack this inside, like nest it in. So this is going to 
I think it'd be a little tricky, but we're gonna work with it. We're gonna see how it goes. Alrighty. So we've got our SVG here, and we've kind of got this header section. So I'm gonna put like a div here, and we'll do our H1. This will be me. And we'll probably make this like a paragraph. And I, that was a lot of content. Let me go see if I can grab that. No, I gotta get a different sketch. Okay. I've got some A tags in here, but we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. There we go. Okay. Let's see what's happening on the page now. So this is all the way over here. Um, alrighty. So I'm going to say class. Let's mark and pop this guy and see how far down this gets us. Almost perfect. <laughs> that worked better than I thought it was going to. So that might work for right now. Um, what is our so that's P4 here so we're going to go ahead and say PX4 it brings in and does this have an extra margin on it oh it's probably got this max width on it We're getting closer, but what's going on? No, that's it. Okay. Um, oh, no worries. Definitely feel free to ask. I mean, this is great. Love, love chatting with everybody here. I'm, I get a little distracted because I'm like trying to code and talk at the same time, so it's hard to do both. Uh, but that's why that's why I stream. Talk to everybody here. So thank you all for for talking today. Love seeing everybody in the chat. Um, and no, there's no no silly questions here. I remember when I was first starting, like live streams didn't exist, and um, a lot of the support stuff that we thought was amazing then didn't uh, was is, is nothing compared to what's out there today. So I'm super happy to help everybody because people helped me when I was getting started. So uh, always happy to answer questions. So feel free, keep them coming. I might not know the answer. That's that's a whole other can of worms, but I'm happy to talk about them with everybody. Um, Let's see, text. Let's try and make this as large as we can. And we'll make this font bold. And text gray. That yeah, looks pretty close. That's even looks even bigger. Let's see. Let's leave that for now. We can come back to that if we want to. Um, and then what's this guy going to be? Say font. Let's try 2x. And say text gray. We'll try e. Can I make it larger? Oh, it's got to be text. That's why. Sometimes I mix up text and font with Tailwind. There we go. And we're gonna go a little lighter. And we're gonna have to make this, put a max width on it. Let's say MR auto. Let's try and make this like four. Okay, that's getting us a step in the right direction. And maybe we'll bring this up to like eight. Is that gonna flex well? All right, we gotta, we gotta deal with some stuff, but this is a step in the right direction. Where's my Z index at? Z zero. I think that works pretty well. Uh, do you think subscribing 15 for Laracast is worth it? Yes, I love Laracast. I I actually did the lifetime subscription when they were they do the sale once a year, so I would wait for that um, and if save up the money and, and do the lifetime because then you just are done. 
uh, if that works for you. You can also get like the, I think the monthly subscription for a discount as well. So they, I think they always do it on Black Friday in the U.S. or so the day after Thanksgiving. Um, so I would wait for that because that is an incredible deal. I love, love Laracast. Can't say enough good things about them. That's Jeffrey Way. That's, that's how I learned most of my Laravel stuff. Um, it's on Laracast. So highly recommend it for anybody who's interested in learning Laravel and getting, getting good at it. So this is like, I don't know what color we were using here. Um, maybe like 600. Maybe we're going to do font light. All right, that looks like a step in the right direction. Let me go to my, no, that's regular. Sometimes it doesn't render exactly the same between sketch and um, your code. And that's when I'll, you kind of have to play with your your font weights a little bit, which can be frustrating. But how much did you spend for a lifetime? I don't remember what it was. It was, I want to say like 150 or $200, somewhere in there. Um, but I still, like, and I did that a couple years ago. So that's, I think, probably is starting to break even right about now. And I use it often enough that that's worth it for me. Like, I, I check out all their new stuff. They're, they're, they recently, they, they did one on TDD that I just found super, super helpful. So I'm, I'm checking it out all the time. Big, big fan. Big fan. Um... Okay, that's, let me try bumping this up one more. That feels better. I feel like this needs to be larger now. And it's funny, so um, this is actually interesting. So this is like what the mock-up looks like. And this is how it's getting like rendered on the screen. And it looks like pretty different, right? But if we, I mean, if we like zoomed in and stuff, this is starting to look more like that. But this is, I think, is where I think a lot of designers get upset with their developers. Um, and vice versa. It's like we're we we're trying to use the tools, the best tools we have available, to like make this a good representation of what we were going for. Um, and sometimes that's possible, and sometimes that's not possible. Uh, that actually looks way better. So I'm gonna. <laughs> we were looking at this a second ago. Um, spacing. So spacing here. I don't think this is what we want. So I'm just going to go and add that to our utilities here. And what are we going to say? Font size. We can say 5 room. Got too many windows going. Um, That would be five, I think. I don't, I don't know what the scale is, but that sounds right. Do the web stuff first, then the design. Yeah, I, I will advocate for design first, then then do your development. But that everyone has their own process, so I'm not going to knock anybody for doing things differently. The way you're, you're not supposed to do There's no, I don't know. I think people get hung up on process a lot of the time, but... You, there's like a gajillion ways to develop something, so uh, I think that's sometimes we get hung up on the wrong things. Uh, <laughs> I am an OCD. I can I can definitely spend way too much time. What's bothering me right now is that this is not exactly centered, so I'm wondering if I can tweak the. Um, I'm gonna tweak the size of this. Where do you go? Your height. Maybe try 50. That seems a little too big. I want there to be an affordance that this page is scrollable. That's probably better. Um, nice. Very nice. All right, go back to our app guy and visitor utilities. Why did that get closed? Oops, that's not the button I wanted. All righty. I think you, if, when you're working your personal portfolio, you kind of want to be the OCD because, um, like, you're building this to show off, right? To to show other people like your skills and everything. So I think it's worth it. At least that's my opinion. Um, it's worth kind of really honing in and trying to get this looking perfect. Um, all right, so let me tweak a few things here. So we're going to do margin top like 48, and and D, and this can be text, right, like 5XL. 
I would say text large. And I think this will look a lot better. It's probably too small now. Too big, too big of a jump. I think it's okay to have this overlap. I think there's a, just enough color contrast. I probably will check this um, with our accessibility tools. I might I might do that afterwards because it's kind of a little bit of a, a tedious process. I don't want to bore anybody. <laughs> Although you, we're, we are watching code on a Saturday morning, so hopefully that's a, I'm I'm not the most exciting thing in your life, but I'm happy you're here. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and add in those links now because we have them, and I just gotta go back to the mock-up to see which ones we're doing. So we're doing Twitch. Twitch will be the first one. Um, a Twitter, blog, and let's get in touch. Okay, so. Oh boy, what happened? Why did I go? Oh, I started doing this in the wrong spot. this and we'll grab my twitch profile one time I, I published my last version of my portfolio and I um, had the uh, the whatchamacall my URLs wrong for my like external stuff and it was really I, a friend of mine was able to come in and tell me that I was I had the wrong links but I was like oh man I should have really thought through that so now every time I have links in my site I really have to try to pay attention that was a little embarrassing do use I do use DigitalOcean I like it a lot uh, that's probably what I will use for this hosting um, as well so I definitely big fan of that alrighty and there's Twitter we'll do another target normally I try to stay away from target blank um, and in this case though I think it's worth, um, it makes sense for what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and then this will go to our, oh, I'm on the wrong, wrong page here, route. And this is, I think, blog. It should just be blog. We'll use our Laravel route helpers. And then let's get in touch. Did I just say touch? Yeah. A lot of links here. That's good. We want to have a lot of actions here, I think, if you're. And we'll just kind of put that there. I don't know. That could, that could be wrong. I'm making an assumption there. It would be good to user test that, but a lot of times they, they, the advice is to. What happened? Um, to have like one clear primary call to action. And I think that makes sense a lot. Um, for this though, I, I wanted to have a little bit more because I'm a, a little bit more multifaceted than I used to be. Um, so I think that will be interesting for, for folks. Okay, so let's see. So that's Twitter, that's Twitch, get in touch, blog. Okay, they're there. Uh, what do you think about View 3? I'm super excited for View 3. Um, I think the team is doing like a really good job soliciting feedback and making sure everybody is going to be happy. I know there were some hiccups with that, um, but I think they're, they're more or less doing a really, really nice job. So. I would, um, I'm really excited for, for what they're coming up with. And I, I was actually on the team that, or not the team, the, the, the group of people who were like interested in what they were doing with like the sort of React hooks style. I thought at first I was like, man, um, this doesn't look good. But then I read what they were talking about. I was like, oh, that's why they're doing it. And once I had read through it and really understood it, um, I, I had a much better opinion. Um, so do I think it's following React? I think it's taking some inspiration from React, certainly. Um, do I think it's following React? No, I think there's, there's still view. They're just doing things um, to really support some difficult cases that React has provided like an elegant solution for. Um, and they're building on top of that solution and actually making an even better one. So I think they're doing really great stuff. Um, obviously, you can debate that, but and there's a lot of debate about it. But that's that's just my two cents. Uh, what happened? Where did we go? I deleted the whole row. Um, am I pushing the right button here? What's going on? 
make sure I'm grabbing the right thing. So yeah, I think it, it's it's probably definitely related to React. It's, I, I can't argue that, um, but I think that's okay. Uh, I think people get bent out of shape like, oh yeah, that's what I was worried about. Uh, oh no, like it's it's becoming a React clone. I think it's okay to take some uh, inspiration from other places and, and run with it because otherwise, like, what's what's the point of like learning from other people? So um, I, I'm I'm happy they're they're doing that. Yeah, so that is what I was worried about. I hadn't thought about that. So let's see here. I can make it smaller. Let me try doing that. That'll be my first attempt at a fix here. All right, that didn't help. this would be a really good argument for like a secondary um, color, which I'm not opposed to doing. We kind of tried to come up with one, I think, but we didn't um, find one that we thought really looked good. Well, that's not no reason why we can't come up with one. Um, let's see here. I'm just going to go ahead and add that no underline and that underline. And with that view stuff, so it, at, at first blush, it looks like, yeah, it does look like it's adding complexity. But if you have ever built a very complicated view component before, um, it actually solves a lot of really great problems that are or a lot of problems that we've run into, or at least I've run into in my career. Um, so when I processed it with that experience, I was like, oh, this like solved a lot of like big issues that I was running into in terms of like, communication between components and sharing information and uh, like inst instantiating data um, and so I was actually getting like kind of excited about it I know they've kind of backed off since then but um, I, I would be interested to play with it like as a module and, and explore it a little bit more all right so that's what we're running into maybe the easiest thing to do is to just make this appear later which is kind of a bummer, but sometimes it's the easiest thing to do. Um, the other thing we can do is make it smaller, but I, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, let's not get too crazy. <laughs> so 768, that's the other thing. I need to reference those a little bit better. So let's try this 1281. And we will have to do, change some things, but so that will definitely fix it. Uh, let me go to our breakpoints. 1024, let's try that one. I should memorize these. What I should do is reference them dynamically from Tailwind, but I have to do that refactor. I didn't realize we could do that so well, or so easily. All right, so that is like right on the line there. Hmm. So I, I guess a couple of options here. I can write my own breakpoint and just add that in when it gets when it's okay. Um, that doesn't feel exactly like what I want to do. The other thing I could do probably is make this like with five. No, nope, I didn't do it. So what if we do the other way? So that is not ideal, but it's a step in the right direction. Let's try that and see how that looks if we can how do you make the blue thingy with SVG? Oh, so I just like designed it with vectors. So this is just a vector shape, like in here in Sketch, and then you can export a layer. So uh, if you have it selected in your layer list, you just hit uh, export. You come down here, you kind of set it to SVG, and then you can export it. Um, and then what I did was I ran it through fix my SVG, I think, and then that was it. So nothing uh, 
super complicated there, but it takes, I mean, you kind of have to know how to do it in order to do it. So that's, that's the challenge there. Uh, where was I? Over here. So we're going to do, where'd it go? Okay, so max of three. And then we'll go large. We'll try and do this. See if it works. We're still running into that issue. So let's see if I can do it like this. Yeah, I think that's going to work for us. The other thing I want to look at is just throw this on a larger screen and see how it's looking. That's going to be a problem. I can take a screenshot for y'all, but basically this is like not where it needs to be. So let me see if I can fix that really fast. I'm going to try to do like MX Auto. Maybe ML Auto? Hmm. That puts it right in the middle, which is not what I wanted. Maybe if we put, what are we doing here, on the slide? Actually, I don't know why we didn't put that up here. And then for the header, can we do the same thing? That's what's going to change that. Hmm. But that would fix my problem up top. It's the problem with these these funky shapes, you run into issues with like sizing and, and when you get to large screens. Um, like it looks fine right here and smaller, but on larger screens it starts getting really really weird looking. And a lot of designers have larger screens, and those are the kind of folks who would be hiring me with this portfolio hypothetically. So um, you kind of want them to have nicer a nicer view, but um, I'll figure I'll figure that out. I don't want to get hung up on those details when this is looking pretty good for the most part. Um, nice. So what are, is our next kind of section here? So next is projects. Let's kind of keep on keep on rolling here. Um, and we do a section here. H two, uh, and so we projects. Alrighty, <laughs> we're gonna have to do some work here. Um, so I'm going to say, M, let's say MT, let's say like 64 again. Nice. Kind of where I want it to be. Um, yeah, I might have to get, I might have to get Flexbox involved. We'll kind of play it by ear. Um, a little bit. And we'll probably make this five and this six. That not oh, because I didn't make this responsive. So how do we do that again? Variants. Got some variants. Adding new utilities. This is it. Yeah, that's what we need. Back to our code here. I think that should work. There we go. That's larger now. That's a big issue. Okay. So we've got our projects down here. And is that looking? I want that even smaller, I think. So let's see. Yeah, that'll be good. OK. 
okay, nice. And for this whole section, let's do PX4. I gotta go look at this real fast because I'm struggling to see how it's. Oh, so it's got that max width. Okay. And we'll do max width 8. That's gonna be our container. Which I should over I could override. Um, that's kind of working right now. So that's the next section, and then this project's going to be. I have some letter spacing that I'm missing. Let me check. Nope. Okay. So now we've got these three projects here in a row. Um, and I believe this landing page. Actually, I might not be doing this. Um, this yet. I don't think I've done the data for the landing page here. So let's go to our controllers, HTTP, uh, project. No, I don't want the project. I want the pages controller. Looking in the wrong spot. All right. Let's see here. So we're going to get projects. Actually, we're just going to grab this. And we have a limit here to like three. Uh, can you give me some advice on making my portfolio? I'm trying to do many Laravel projects as possible and showcase them in my portfolio. In my country, that's how they would hire someone. How can I deploy multiple Laravel projects on the site? Um, so you couldn't deploy your projects on the same site, I don't believe. You probably would want to deploy each of those projects individually and then like link to them um, so that way you can show them. So that's kind of the, the way I would go about doing that. So I would have a, de a separate deployment for each of my projects. You can put them all on the same server, so you don't have to pay for multiple servers. Um, but they would be separate like projects on that server and have separate DNS and URL records. That's, I think, how I would approach that problem. I haven't had to do that, so uh, but that's how I would I would go about doing it. Um, and that way, you can have you would have multiple projects. They would be in separate locations, but they would be on. You could link to them from your site. I wouldn't try and put them all on the same website because that's and it wouldn't really make sense I think with Laravel so uh, that's that's kind of how I would approach it if that uh, hopefully that helps so welcome okay we got our div here and we're gonna have at for each projects as project and for each any free server? I don't. I don't think anyone does free servers for Laravel. Um, not that I've seen. I think your best bet is probably DigitalOcean. You can buy one server for pretty cheap, like kind of like five bucks a month kind of thing, um, and then uh, host a couple of different projects on that, and that would probably be your cheapest bet. Um, there are probably cheaper providers out there that I'm just not aware of, but in terms of like the value you're getting for that money, um, it's probably worth it. AWS might be cheaper, but I don't know off the top of my head. I, I haven't heard of anything free. Like, there's no like Netlify for um, Laravel. Although that would that would be super nice. I, I wish there was a lot of that time. Um, so let's see here. We're gonna have. We're gonna need our project image, and then the project title, and then description, and then the, the URL it looks like. So um, I'm just kind of gonna go ahead and put all these in here. So. I think it's header image. Say, uh, project title. Descriptive. No, that's not good. Writing alt text is always hard. Trying to do it right. How would somebody want to look at this? It, it actually depends on the project, which is why it's really hard to write these generic ones. Um, maybe I should include that in my database. I'm trying to think. We'll come back to this. I'll make it to do. Oh, that's not what I need. Hmm. I don't want to add so spaced out.
just a little note for myself. And if you if you in PHP Storm, if you say like to do in front of it, it's really nice because then you um, it like highlights it for you, and like you can go to your to dos pane and like see where your different to dos are. Um, looks like I've got a couple. Five seven. That looks like it's. Oh, that's my public. That doesn't make sense. That's something else. Um, somebody left some to dos to do. But then I can go and like find them really easily, so that's why I like using that that formatting. Uh, let's see here. We're gonna have an H three probably. We get like a spell project, and then we call that the title, and then we've got a paragraph here. Project description, and then we'll have an A tag. And this will be to the route um, pages that project, and then we'll pass in the project so we can oop, the, generate the route, and then I can see case study or something like that, right? View case study. I'm gonna say C because that's I think a little bit more friendly. Let me try doing it that way. Oops, there's an error. Pages that project not fine. I thought I had that set up wrong. What do we call that? Uh, just project. Okay. Nice. So we've got our projects here. These are just dummy. This is it's, it's all just dummy stuff. Um, and actually, I've got to do our because this is a fixed um, nav. I'm going to do some JavaScript on that to kind of make it. Um, have a background properly. So, but we've got our projects here and we've got links to them. So this is kind of what we're going for. So let's see here. I might use CSS grid again, uh, just because I really enjoyed it. It was such a nice um, tool to work with. Um, so I'm gonna probably do that again. And inside of my admin utility, so I do have this grid three. Um, <laughs> I, I probably could have extracted this better. Um, so I'm going to kind of grab this. Eh, that's annoying because I'm using it in the same spot. I don't have two separate, ad, like I don't have admin CSS and I don't have visitor CSS, so this would kind of override itself. Um, hmm. I didn't think this one through enough. That's grid, and this is probably table. And this is kind of inherent. I'll put this up like that. And that's going to break a lot of my backend styling, but this became much more flexible now. Okay, so let me go to my pages here and fix that real fast. So media index. And I don't think it's in images. Post definitely. Oh, where do I go? Post index. And project index. And tag index. Definitely did that a couple of different spots. Cool. A little refactor there. I think I just exited out of that, which I didn't want to do. Um, Alrighty. So that I think will work a little bit better. So let me just try using this and see if it works um, for these guys. Definitely on the right on the right track. Um, let's see here. So that didn't fix it. All right, here. Let's see. Probably it's images of what's going on. Oh. Are they high auto? 
didn't fix it either. Oh, it's because I don't know. <laughs> so, probably because of this setup here. Yeah, that's what's going on. Um, okay, that's cool. I basically need like a grid utilities page. And better, <laughs> better naming conventions. We got grid. And then we're going to do grid. I guess even. Let's see, max content. And yeah, we could use repeat here, but I think this will work for us right now. Um, I'm actually going to say grid. Three even. So now they're all the same, the right size. I think these are different photos every time, which is kind of funny. Those are really going off the page. So with full auto is not working. Shouldn't have to do that. that overflowing so much uh, I do work at Lambda School yes that is my my job <laughs> great place definitely uh, recommend if you're interested in learning development or design I teach design there um, definitely recommend coming down because it's probably the best place to learn in the world right now I'm a little biased but that's that's my my take Alrighty. So why is this not cooperating just the way I want it to? Hmm. I guess there's a gap. I think it has to do with the images. doing that uh, yeah I'm an instructor so I teach I'm a UX design instructor at land school one of the one of the teammates uh, not what I wanted hmm. all right let me just try and see if this is uh, yeah so we are not in Asia yet we are getting there um so one day we will be okay so i don't know what's going on there um basically the way it works currently is that um if you are like i, I assume we're talking about the income share agreement and how that works so if you come to lambda school you do not pay as a student you only pay uh back once you get a job so as um and you're only paying if you're making over fifty thousand dollars a year um so that is sort of the how it works um, it you would only ever pay back a maximum of 30,000 so let's say you end up making getting a job um, that pays like three hundred thousand dollars just for like some crazy example so you would pay 17 percent of your salary back to Lambda school for two years or until you hit that um, 30k cap whatever comes first so you can pay it back much faster if you get a really crazy high paying job um, which not three hundred thousand but we've had some really impressive students land crazy crazy jobs so definitely not impossible but not often um so 17 percent of your income for two years uh only if you're making over 50k a year 
if you're making 45k you don't have to pay anything and if you lose that job um, for whatever reason you leave you get fired what happens uh, you get laid off whatever happens you stop paying so there's like no interest um, and there's no like we're not after you once you get that job it's only if you are making over 50k a year um, and that is then so then you're on the hook for like five years maximum so if you get a job for a year you lose that job you look for like four three years then you get another job um, you you have to pay back for two years or until you hit the cap and but after five years it's all forgiven no interest you're free to go about uh, your life so I don't know exactly how it will work in Asia. Uh, we are looking into that. It's definitely, I know I'm not personally, in, but I, I know members of our team are. So it's definitely something that we are interested in and want to kind of figure out. Um, but we are, we're still in the process of figuring it out. So let's see, uh, this looks like it's a real issue. So grid, not a hundred percent. There we go. Oh, I'm probably using the wrong. Now that I think about it, I'm probably using the wrong. It goes like this. Three, something like that. Let's say this. There we go. I was using the wrong value. Um, nice, much better. And cool, so that's our grid. Coming together now. And I can do some, ooh, could do some CSS here. Actually, we'll just make this responsive, which is really nice. Two, something like that. And we can do one as well. So now we can stack this responsibly. So let's see here. got our three then we're down to two and then we're down to one nice and let me go ahead where did that go so we've got a grid template column gap uh what's the difference between ui and ux good question um let me just do this real fast so y ui is a subset of ux so user interface design is like what kind of what we're doing now, right? We're just kind of tweaking the design and we're trying to make it um, as set up as possible within the the interface itself. So it's like all the components of like how do we um, create an interface that looks good and that we're we're happy with um, and it's good for our users. User experience encapsulates user interface. It's like the thinking about the entire experience. What content are we showing them? Why are we showing them this at this point in time? How do we know this is usable? How do we know this is uh, something they want to see? Is this delivering value for the user at this point in time? All those bigger picture considerations are part of user experience. And so user interface fits in with that. Like how are people interacting with the software, the application? Hugely important part of a digital user experience. But Understanding the bigger picture, the customer's or the user's entire experience with the product or brand and how they are using the interface to um, be a part of that experience is, is a much bigger conversation. So I think a lot of people think of like user experience designers or like they're only doing the UI work. They're not. They spend most of their time doing research, um, doing um, like uh, ideation, definitional activities, synthesizing that research, developing solutions to those problems. Um, how do you come up with an innovative product experience that um, you can then implement into a user interface? That is more of what being a UX designer is about than actually designing the interface. Sure, it's something we do, um, but 
there's a lot more that goes into user experience than just designing an interface. So that's kind of a, and it, it's it's kind of hard to explain it sometimes, but I think that's a pretty good um, starting point. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's 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 tough, but I think it's a good one. It's um, I really enjoy it. I, w I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Um, it's, it's, it's the actual, it's like the only interesting thing in product development, if you ask me. Like coding is, is super fun, um, but it's, you're kind of just executing the product vision. You're just, you're doing dealing with the what and the how, not like the why. And UX is dealing with the why of product development. Um, is UI UX part of front end dev? I, a little bit. Um, Definitely it's something that you probably need to take into account, but I would say you're, it's more UI oriented than UX oriented, um, most likely. Definitely something to be thinking about, but uh, like UX as, as a, um, it's, it's definitely something you wanna be thinking about as the developer, but not necessarily critical uh, for your job. So let's see here, we wanna add a little bit more spacing in between these. You know, there's a probably a strong argument to be made for not making these utilities and making them just having doing them as a class. Um, but that would have been, I don't know, we're learning through this process too. Um, so you're the vision, the front end dev execute vision, kind of. I think there's more to it than that, but I would say that's, if you're starting from that point, that's not a bad spot. Um, definitely definitely something that is part of the process kind of working and uh, working together collaboratively and because as designers you don't often know what's technically possible so you and the front end dev have to really collaborate and kind of get a sense for what you can do together um, but that is uh, again something that, that takes time and practice so there we go I think that's looking pretty good right now um, and I think if I throw this up on my big screen yeah that's centered nicely Lost that there. I mean, there's, there's definitely more nuance to it than that, but I think that is a, a good place to be starting from. Okay, let's go ahead and finish styling these guys. These cards. So we're going to do some rounding here. Um, and we'll style those as well. Okay. So let's say rounded. Um... Class equals text. Reexcel. Uh, let's see if I'm bold. Let me grab this guy. And maybe we'll do like MV6. And change the line height here a little bit. Oh, what do they call it? Leading? Snug? here we'll say like six and then four and see if we can reverse that a little bit that's looking a lot better um thanks yeah we just redid the website and uh we had a really our creative director really did a great job with it she's an awesome designer so i think they did a nice job overall with it for sure uh, okay, so now we've got to do, and what are we using here? A lot of this stuff. Let me just grab this to start with. Might make that a little a hair larger. Here, this class, grab some of what we're using for that A tag over here. I don't think we have an underline on it. Oh, we do. Nice. 
And what else are we going to do here? That can be four. Probably the same size as this guy. And actually, we'll try and do this with the MT Auto. We might have to use Flex here. Yeah, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. So we'll go ahead and say, let's call, and uh, well, what is it? Item end. Forget what the well. Let's see what this does, and then we'll tweak it from there. Um, where is our flex stuff? Flex values. There's a way to do self. Yeah, there we go. Line self. Yeah, that's what I thought. Self end. Because we're in column, we're on a different axis, so um, justify content. Hmm. Let me see. I mean, we could do it like this. Put a div in here. Let me say justify between should work. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going for. Um, obviously, these are not going to be that long in the act, like the actual project name, so I'm not as worried about this, but I think this is going to work for us for the most part. And we'll just add a little bit of margin bottom to this. Actually, we'll do a margin top on this guy. Um, just so we have some built-in spacing for sure. And let's go look at this. So this looks a little bit smaller here. I want to go and tweak this a little bit. I think that works. Let's say large and XL. And let's say 2XL. Yeah, and, and we're going to get there. Just yeah, We, we got to make sure we're doing it really well where we're doing it right now, and then we're going to be uh, able to better serve as many folks as possible. So one day, we're going to get there. Um, gotta, it's got to give it a little time. I know good things take time, so we definitely, we definitely want to get there. It's not like we're not going to do it. It's just going to take us a, a minute to make sure it's all good. Um, yeah, I think that was working. And then we'll do text to Excel and then the medium like that. Alrighty. That looks pretty good to me. Might tweak the spacing a little on mobile. I think that looks pretty good. Oop, I didn't want to click the button. Good to know it works though. So. Oh, interesting. Uh, how many students do we have? Or is that a secret? I think, I don't think I'm allowed. I actually don't know off the top of my head. We've added so many. Um, so I don't know exactly. So I'm, I'm probably not the best person to ask. That's, I don't, I guess Flex is doing that. Um, we get block. Not what I wanted. I'll 
that's not what I wanted. I'll try flex ground zero. Really? Hmm. Thought that would have done it for sure. Oh, I guess one thing I could do. That really bugs me. I don't know if it bugs anybody else. Um, where like you have like clickable elements outside of the obvious indicator or the obvious affordance. Um, but yeah, nice. So I think this is looking pretty good. Uh, we're kind of coming up on two hours here and that's kind of where I, I like to stop. Um, so we were able to get through this section mostly and then this section with one or two minor tweaks to be made. And I guess we're going to make that pop bold as well. Um, yeah, these things take a little time, but definitely going to be working on this a little bit more next weekend. Uh, and then on Wednesday, if you want some portfolio feedback or anything like that, happy to help. So share it with me on Twitter. Um, definitely going to be, uh, looking at some more portfolio. So thank you everybody. Thanks for, um, the chatting. Really appreciated it. Um, good luck with everything you're working on and we'll see you next time.